Right, this is Linton the Swarm Vassal, Bellator light like heavyweight contender, and you're watching the MMA Crypt Fighting Talk Show. Great way to start on MMA.com. On today's show, we are speaking with new UFC signee and former Lonsdale British welterweight champion, Mr. Tom Breeze. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure, Tom. Okay, Tom, you were signed with the UFC. Uh, you only c That's coming off just one fight for Cage Warriors. Uh, we don't... In the news recently, there's been a lot of, uh, what should we say, we call it uncertainty in regards to Cage Warriors' future. They've uh, offered all the fighters on the roster one fight elsewhere, any promotion, so I believe. Obviously, I'm assuming there's a few promotions, what they won't be allowed to fight at. Uh, your manager, of course, Graham Boylan, he stepped down uh, CEO for that company. There hasn't been an event for four months now. I believe he was on the last event. I think that was Cage Warriors 74. Uh, so there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of uncertainty regarding Cage Warriors' future. I just wanted to know, in regards to you, Tom, uh, how much of a factor that played in you signing with the UFC and deciding yeah. you? It was a big factor. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there was a couple of shows I could uh, I potentially fought on, but um, you know we felt like the the UFC was the the best move. That I'm I'm ready for the UFC, and uh, yeah, Kate, with Cage Warriors not having any more shows. I didn't want to get signed into a con uh, a contract with uh, another show outside the UFC. Uh, you mentioned a couple of shows there. Obviously, you can't name names, but uh, was that was that international shows? Was that regional shows in the UK? Obviously, you, you're sticking with. Do you live in Canada now, Tom? Is that where you're based now? Yeah, I'm. I'm living in Montreal. Uh, was there sort of Canada-based promotions? We know there's a lot of uh, promotions based in Canada. Could we, you tell us where was, they was based? There was prom promotions all over the world that. That we had potential to fight on. Okay. Well, speaking of Cage Warriors, uh, just uh, maybe a personal opinion here, or maybe just an opinion as a fan. Do you sort of think Cage Warriors will stick around now because they've done a lot of great work over the years? Really, have. Graham's done such a fantastic job. Uh, maybe I'm just giving too much credit to Graham there, but it seems like he's the man pulling the strings. But uh, it really seems like a shock. Like they really reached number three in the world in a lot of fans' eyes. They're just sort of like. Fans are questioning, are they going to be around in a few months? Are they going to shop shop? What do you personally think, Tom? Well, I hope they uh, they come back and you know, and, or they they stick around. You know, there was the the best show in Europe by a mile, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. It could be uh, financial problems or, or anything. So I I hope to see them come back, but I'm I'm not sure what's going to happen. Now, as I mentioned, you only had one fight for Cage Warriors. Uh, from what I can recall in a post-fight interview, uh, I think it was with Front Row MMA, uh, Steve, uh, you mentioned that you wasn't happy with your performance uh, for Cage Warriors. So I just have to ask this, Tom. Obviously, you jump into you know the top level of the fight game now in the USC. Would you prefer more fights? Possibly, obviously, we know you can't predict what's going to happen with Cage Warriors. You know, I'm assuming you was planning to have more fights with Cage Warriors before you signed on with the likes of the UFC or something. Would you have preferred more fights just to get your footing back? Because you're coming off uh, nearly two years out of injury and a serious injury at that. Would you have preferred at least a couple more warm-up fights, so to speak, before signing um, up the UFC? Not really. I kind of felt like I, I learnt a lot from that fight and I, now I know, you know, I dust off the cobwebs because, you know, I believe that the level I'm at, if I would have Continue fighting on cage warriors at that level. Uh, yeah, I would have. The, the fights would have been very short. You mentioned that you learned a lot from that fight. Could you tell us what you learned? Just you know, the I hadn't fought for two years, so you know, just the feeling of being being back in there and um, you know that competition experience. I've been competing uh, in uh, grappling a lot as well outside of um, outside of MMA. You know, just to gain that competition experience again. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing that I learned was. You know, I, I've now I've had to see someone about uh, a nutritionist about cutting weight because my weight cut was awful. I felt so weak in that fight. You know, you only seen a, a small percentage of of what I'm really about because because the, uh, the the weight cut you know wasn't wasn't good at all. Now, are you sort of surprised that the UFC came calling so soon? Because we know that you are a you know you're a top prospect coming out of the UK. Uh, you moved on to, to Canada now. You trained at TriStar. Uh, you was the Bama British champion as well, so obviously you got a lot of credentials in such a short career. But are you sort of surprised that USC come calling because you was off two years and you only had one fight back? Um, yeah, I suppose 
I always knew I'd be in the UFC eventually. Um, yeah. I thought it would have been uh, maybe if I was expecting me to have one more fight and then and then possibly get signed. But the, the UFC are signing guys now with uh, you know that that have had less fights than me. So a lot a lot of the champions like Chris Weidman, John Jones, um, Cain Velasquez, they entered the UFC with like four and zero records. So. Well, we know that uh, the USC also picked up Nico Starby, which is a great capture too. Uh, I just said that Invicta picked up Paddy Kian's side as well. So uh, it seems like the bones are starting to be picked of Cage Warriors. Uh, we mentioned that you want to see Cage Warriors stick around. But uh, do you think maybe this is the beginning of the end for Cage Warriors and the USC are really going to start picking the bones of that promotion? Because there's still a lot of high-level fighters there, a lot of great talent. What's really not got the name recognition yet, but really real gems in that promotion. And I think the USC know it too. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if, if cage warriors don't come back, I can see a lot of the guys that were fighting on cage warriors getting signed by the UFC. There were some, you know, very, very talented fighters from the UK and, and Europe fighting on cage warriors. Well, a lot of your fights in, in your career, it was for Bama. Obviously, that was the number one promotion. It seems like the last two years, cage warriors have sort of took over them. But this year, Bama have really picked up where cage warriors left off last year. They've just signed yep. on with Channel 5 now. The new Spike UK TV deal. It's massive for them. Uh, they've obviously started building their own fight as they call it New Age. But really, I think Bama could uh, pick up a few talent there. Do you expect Bama to dominate 2015? Obviously, with Cage Warriors having a slow start. Uh, that, that's because you fought for both promotions, mainly. I want to ask you that question. Um, yeah, definitely. I think I think fighters are going to go... Are going to fight on the shows that... Um, are going to gonna be... Uh, put, well, putting on the most regular shows, you know... Where they know they can fight regularly, so and, and Bama, you know, is a it's the biggest pa uh, platform in the country right now. So uh, I can see a lot of fighters wanting to fight on Bama. Now, we ask what sort of impact you think Bama are going to make uh, in 2015. Uh, just what type of impact are you looking to make in the UFC welterweight division this year? I, I, you know, I want to go in. I'm going to take one, take it one fight at a time. But you know, yeah. I want to go yeah. in there and uh, and make a statement. You know. Um, uh, as long as I'm improving as a as a fighter, I'm happy and you know I I, I believe I'm I'm more than ready for the UFC. If you was going to sort of rank yourself now, looking at the uh, the roster, where would you place yourself now? Because obviously you train with people who've been in the UFC, people are still in the UFC, uh, title contenders, former champions. Where do you sort of place yourself now? Do you still think you've got a bit of work to do before you break into the top 15? Have you sort of mapped out a plan where you can reach certain levels? Or do you think if it was thrown to you, maybe two fights down the line, that you could hang with a top 15 guy in the UFC? Um, you know, one fight at a time, I have to see how it goes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how my next fight goes and then, and then uh, work from there, really. You know, I'm not going to make any bold statements right now. Has there been talks of your debut yet? I know you can't mention names. I uh, understand that. But uh, usually, once a new signing is signed with the promotion, it's been announced. Uh, usually, within a week, at least mainly two weeks, there's always a fight announced. Has there been uh, some names mentioned, or is it just purely signing with the company at this point? I have a date for when I'm fighting, and uh, uh, and I know where where the fight will be, but no names yet. Uh, can you release where you, where you can be fighting? Uh, no, fighting? The, uh, the UFC are going to release. Okay. Now, obviously, the UFC, there's decent names in Bama, there's decent names in Cage Warriors, but uh, when it comes to the UFC, there's sort of like uh, fights that you sort of relish in a way, you know, dream fights. Uh, maybe not dream fights, maybe someone like Matt Hughes' dream fight, but uh, is there any names on that roster, but really, I mean this in a respectful way, not in a, a cocky comment way, but uh, is there any there what you sort of lick your lips, lick your chops and go, oh yeah, I cannot wait for something like that? Well... You know, there's there's a there's a lot of big names, especially in the welterweight division. You know, it's a very exciting division, and yeah, yeah, of course, there's there's guys that you know it'd be very exciting to fight them. But I can't, I don't really have like, you know, a what what a name of one guy, you know. But there, there's some big names, and I, you know, there's some guys that I've really uh, you know, been a fan of watching them, and you know, I look I look forward to fighting them one day. Well, obviously, you sign on there with the Reebok deal in place. Uh, is that exciting for you, Tom? Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure how the uh, Reebok deal works for you know the 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 unranked guys. I understand that they make a walkout T-shirt for you. This is what I understand. Uh, you wear it on the press conferences. Uh, 
on the interviews, etc. Pre-fight, post-fight press conference. Uh, you walk out to the cage, and I believe that they sell it online. And whatever they make and whatever many ever sell, you get a certain profit off it. From that, that's from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty cool. I mean, to it's, be honest, I, I kind of like the idea of uh, you know each fighter having his um, you know that they have their own brand behind them and. Yeah. It's a bit more original. Well, now everyone, now everyone's got like this, this kind of uniform deal. You know, I'm not, I'm not so keen on the idea, but you know. Um, so that that sounds like you have an easy time with sponsors, there, Tom. Have you got along with sponsors okay? Because there's a lot of fighters what really have a hard time tracking them down, getting paid, etc. So are you are you someone who's had good relationship relationships with sponsors in the past? I, I did, I did have very good relationship with sponsors before my ACL surgery. But the, I had the ACL surgery and. You know, it's not good for business for the sponsors. So, you know, I only had the one fight since I've come back. Is is there anything to prove to yourself after coming back from that injury, or do you still sort of know you can achieve what you want to achieve? Oh, I know I can. Yeah, I you know I train six days a week, twice a day, every day. I know I know how good I am. Yeah. I've just I think the I think honestly the most important thing for me is nailing down these weight cuts. Well, you know how good you are, but. Uh... The fans over in America, there's a good chance they've never heard of Tom Breeze. Obviously, the UK fans yep. know exactly who you are. So, for the fans who haven't seen you fight yet, what can they expect from Tom Breeze when he makes his UFC debut? You know, they can see a, a, a fighter that's, you know, that's got uh, very good jiu-jitsu, good boxing, um, and he's always looking to finish the fight. Well, Tom, thank you for joining me today. Uh, is there any thanks, mentions, sponsor that you want to say before we leave? Um... Yeah, I'd like to thank my, my team, TriStar Gym, and uh, the coaches there, and everyone that's uh, helped me in my career to get me where I am today. Awesome. From the MMA Equip Fighting Talk Show, as always, thank you for watching.